Aaron Cantu here with trainer Ronnie Shields. Ronnie, you got Tristan Cal Cal Cruth making his pro debut. What do you see in him as a fighter, and what do you are what are you expecting of him in this first bout? Well, you know he's he's only 17 years old, so right now we're just going through the basic stuff. Right now, we're not trying to do anything out of the ordinary. But this kid is a special kid, and you know, so we'll see what he looks like tomorrow night, and then we'll see, you know what we have to do to push him toward, toward a second fight. Definitely. Now, I just spoke to him, and he said that you think he might one day become a heavyweight. He's definitely going to be a heavyweight. You know, he's already 6'4", 180 pounds right now. You know, I mean, you know, he's a young kid, so he's still growing. He have not got to his man strength yet either. So he's definitely going to be a heavyweight in the next two years. And what are you focusing on with him, uh, you know, in training? Is it just kind of getting the basics down and, and the fundamentals of boxing? Absolutely. That's all. Just the basic stuff that he already knows. But we're just trying to sharpen him up and making sure that, you know, he don't forget the basics. You know, because as you go up down, up the ladder, you know, the basics are going to play a huge part for his career. For sure. Now, you've been a busy man, Ronnie. Uh, both of your FAs is fought. Let's start with the first one. Uh, Pochi had one of the most entertaining fights of the year. He was stretched for for a few rounds, but he eventually stopped his opponent. What did you make of F.A. Apochi's last performance? I thought he did great, man. You know, it was his first eight-round fight, you know, and he got the knockout. That's what he wanted. But, you know, look, Earl Newman, I've been knowing Earl Newman a long time. A lot of experience, Olympian, you know, so we knew that he was going to be a tough fight, but I just thought a poacher was going to be too strong for him, and in the end, it turned out to be just that. And uh, that was a guy that he fought that basically didn't lay down and gave uh, F.A. some rounds. How do you think that will serve him moving forward, and where do you see uh, a poacher in this uh, light heavyweight division, or excuse me, cruiserweight division? You know, I think a poacher can really be a force in the cruiserweight division. You know, right now, it's all about fighting experience, guys. That's what he's doing. You know, he's 31 years old, so we're about to push him up a little bit more now. And, look, within a year, this kid should be fighting for the world title. He's got relentlessness to his game, but you saw once he started getting tagged, he started to move his head a little bit. Is that one thing you're working on? That's, that's one of the main focuses right now because, you know, you know, with his style, he's subject to take punches, you know. So, but we just try to work on defense a lot and just make sure that, you know, his game was up to par. Definitely, Ronnie. Now, F.A. Ajagba had a, uh, a fight where he went the distance, and it was a great fight where his opponent didn't lay down either. What did you make of his last performance? Well, you know what people don't understand sometimes is that, you know, you know F.A. went through an injury before the fight, and it was his right elbow, and he hyperextended it in the first round. So basically, he really couldn't throw his right hand at all. You know, but he did, you know, but we really – focus a lot on the jab anyway because I just knew just in case he got hurt that we had to depend on the left hand only and he did that you know he threw some right hands that was really killing him you know throughout the fight but you know he sucked it up and he did what a, a champion is supposed to do he went out and he won the fight definitely is, is that a shoulder or elbow injury is it significant or you know how, how long can we expect them to, uh, to recover from that one well, he's going to be out now. He's doing re rehab on it as we speak. You know, he's uh, took an MRI, you know, there was a lot of swelling in there. And they gave him these pills that were supposed to help him but didn't. So he's doing physical therapy on it right now. We're going to end up probably having to take a shot or something to try to help to get the swelling out. But he was supposed to come back next month in September. But we're going to have to probably push him back to November, October, November. Definitely, and obviously F.A. still undefeated and still progressing, and uh, obviously you feel he's still maybe a year or two away from that world title level. Um, just any more comments on him moving forward? Yes, absolutely. Look, F.A. Jaco, he's going to be a force in the heavyweight division, you know, and his next fight, you know, we're going to step it up even more since the last fight. You know, we're going to fight somebody, you know, now probably, you know, ranked in at least top 15, 20 in the world just to see where we are completely. You know, look, he feels he's ready, and so we're going to go. Good deal. Ronnie, what, did, what was your immediate reaction to Andy Ruiz beating Anthony Joshua on that June 1st fight? It didn't surprise me. I've been watching Andy Ruiz for a long time, and this kid, he doesn't look the part, but he is the part. 
and that kid can fight, and I, pre I predict him to win again by KO in the rematch. What, Ronnie, what did he do in that fight to win? Obviously, he has quick hands and he got in the inside, but what, what did he do uh, to beat Joshua that night? Well, I think he stole Joshua's heart when Joshua hit him and dropped him, and he got right back up like nothing happened. And I think that surprised Joshua. And, you know, and I really just think that Joshua realizes he can't hurt this guy. You know, Joshua hit him with some good shots, dropped him, but it didn't do anything to him. And he hit Joshua, and Joshua couldn't take it. Definitely. Now, you've trained Spilka against Deontay Wilder. Now, Wilder's slated to fight Luis Ortiz. Do you think Luis Ortiz is going to give him any problems in that rematch? Of course he's going to give him problems. Ortiz is a hard guy to fight. And plus, he's a big, strong guy. You know, look, I think Deontay is going to stop him again, but it's going to be a tough fight like the first one was. Yeah, and we saw Ortiz hurt him in the seventh and had him struggling in the eighth. Do you think uh, Wilder is going to kind of keep his distance and be cautious once again? No, I don't think so. I think Deontay is confident in his power. He realizes that he can hurt you. But he has to be smart, though, because he saw in the first fight that he can get hit and get dropped. So, look, Ortiz has the power to win this fight. But I think Wilder has to fight smarter than he did the first fight. Is there any possibility of Ortiz, as we saw he was winning rounds in that fight, of him stealing enough rounds and making it go to the score scorecards and winning in that fashion? It can happen that way, but I think Deontay is smart enough to know now what he has to do. You know, he has to control the fight early. He can't let Ortiz control the fight like he did the last time. He has to turn it up early, and I, then I think he can win. Last one, hypothetical, hypothetical matchup. How do you see a potential fight between Deontay Wilder and Andy Ruiz playing out? Man, that's, that's how Ali Frazier fight all over again. You know, I, I, think, I think it'll be a great fight. And I really, really, truly, right now, I could even pick a winner because, you know, both guys are very confident in their abilities. And when you got two guys that's confident like that and two strong punches, I mean, it's hard to pick a winner. It's a great clash of styles because Ruiz is a shorter, stockier, fast hand fighter and basically someone that Deontay really hasn't seen that type of style throughout his career. Absolutely. He hasn't fought nobody, you know, that short that really can throw punches at him the way Ruiz can do it. Ruiz has a good jab. He throws great combinations and he can punch. So you got those three things. And Deontay, you know, he's rangy, but he got a hard punch. And so... That's like power against power. You know, I love those kind of fights, and I wish it happens. I hope it happens too. Thank you, Ronnie. Appreciate it.